Hello, hello everyone! It is relax and craft time again tonight. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's time where we can chill, we can relax and craft and chit chat together. I'm here for about an hour every evening and uh, we work through a project from beginning to end so you can see every step along the way. So we are continuing tonight on the Charming Chevrons Quilt by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. A link to this pattern, it is a super great pattern, a link to that is in this post here. Uh, so that means I got my machine back from the sewing machine hospital today. So I had to get a couple, well I had to get a belt on, a new belt for the motor because it had cracks in it and luckily they did not charge me. Uh, they 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 put the wrong belt on last time or the cracked belt and uh, so now they ordered a fresh belt instead of just took one, taking one off the shelf and uh, let's see if it works. I'm thinking it'll be good to go. I'm excited to have it back. Uh, this is where we left off on the Charming Chevrons quilt. We were piecing in the web, the webbing way of piecing where we, uh, we sew in rows and we keep all of it connected but you can see that you know all of these rows are only being held by little strings here so uh, this is where we left off and uh, I think what we're gonna do is instead of continuing these rows we are gonna start a whole new quadrant for the remaining the remaining pieces so that means we'll make another section kind of like this and we just have to remember that this is section A and you know what let's write that on here right away so this is section this is a 7 right here so this is going to be 7A and then there we go 7A and then the other section that we do next will be section B so it'll start at row 7 because we already did rows 1 through 6 it'll start at row 7 7 through 11 and it'll be the B section so it'll be the second segment if that makes sense so we have the first uh, part of the rows and then we have the second part of rows this will be the first part of the rows and the reason we're going to do it separately is because this is getting big and bulky and just all over the place it's getting a little more difficult to handle so we will just do the other section by itself uh, and then we will sew the whole thing together later. So we do still have to sew the rows together, but I thought let's get rid of all our teensy little pieces and then we'll worry about the big rows and then sewing the quadrants together. So, and then here's the, the other half of the quilt is, uh, the quilt front is sitting right there. We will be sewing this onto it when we're done. So that is the plan for tonight. Again, if you're just popping in, we are back to the Charming Chevron's quilt. Uh, be sure to check out the pattern in the post here. So, all right, let's get going tonight. Let me know how your first full day of spring was. It's still cold and snowing here. <laughs> Not as bad as you guys out, out east, but you know, it ain't spring yet. So, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna flip you guys around. Let's get going. Okay, got the table set up, got the machine back. I am so happy about that. Uh, but where I wanted to start uh, with you guys tonight is here is my little section of um, my, my rows. So I have row 7, row 8, row 9, row 10, and 11. And they are all the remaining half chevrons. So what we have to do is in this webbing style, uh, we want to we're going to work in rows. So we're going to start at row seven. I'm just going to grab the top two. We're going to do the top two and uh, sew them into the first chevron. So the first the first V, and then uh, then the next one we sew will be the first two from row eight, and then the first two from row nine, the first row from row 10, and the first two from row 11. And that will be it. We'll have our five columns, 
or a column of, of five pieces. And then what we're going to do is come back and take from row one again and keep sewing that, sew that piece onto here, then take row eight, just one, and sew onto the row eight row while keeping all of our pieces connected. So this is the webbing style of doing it. I think it's a little faster and you can see your whole piece at once. Uh, it'll make a little bit of sense once we get going, but just know that after this first, after the first two of each row, we are just gonna be picking the top out of each row one at a time. Then the next row, we'll do the columns again and again and again until we are out of rows over here. So, okay, let's start sewing. I got my top two from row seven. And let's scooch way down here by the sewing machine tonight. I'm so happy to have this guy back. Um, I haven't used it yet, so we'll see how we'll see how it handles tonight. Um, remember, I I had that broken belt on it, and that's what I was getting getting checked on. But all right, here are our two pieces. I'm going to put them together, and you know what? Let's grab a wonder clip. I have a little mini wonder clip here. I'm going to with the flat, the open open seams here, I'm gonna just put the two, two seams together. So there we go, the two seams. And I'm gonna just clip that in place. That'll be a, a, our guide. Okay, and that's that, let's sew. And uh, then we will take the ones from the next row. And I'm gonna grab my stiletto and we'll get going here. My stiletto is just kinda, it's like an extra hand here. I can just help guide, guide the machine in. All right, let's give it a go. Ooh, it sounds smooth. It's been so long. Doesn't it feel like that? I don't know, I feel like it, I feel like I haven't sewn in ages and ages. And I'm glad that we're starting fresh, like with the next the next quadrant, because then I don't have to feel like I have a huge bulky mass to deal with again. Yeah, it sounds quiet, exactly. Alright, I'm gonna tilt you guys down just a hair so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing here. Let me get situated a little bit there. Okay, so that was uh, the first two pieces from row seven. Now I'm gonna take the first, the top two pieces from row eight. So here's piece one and piece two. There we go, so let's flip those around and put those together. I have not taken this off of the machine yet. I'm leaving that on. So we're chain piecing. That's when you sew a bunch of similar pieces together at once and it it saves time and thread and uh, and it's just fun to have a big massive chain of pieces when you're done. Wow there's a little hum to it but I think it's like the hum of something running smoothly. <laughs> so that's exciting. Get my extra little hand in there, my my stiletto. This stiletto is just a turkey lacer with um, a flat bead on it, a couple beads glued on it, but I don't know, I love it. I use it all the time for sewing. And I love that it's just a, a turkey lacer. I think that makes it extra special. All right, so that was row seven, row eight. And uh, here is row nine, the first two pieces. Put those right sides together. Let me know if any of you have started any punch needle things. That was fun. That was fun the, the past couple days uh, working on or uh, trying out the punch needle. Uh, the whole punch needle craft. I haven't, haven't, hadn't done that before and I found it super duper relaxing. Oh, a turkey lacer. Oh, it's, it's for 
man, I think what it's used for is when you're like um, making a turkey for like Thanksgiving, you can uh, use this to kind of hold pieces together. Like if you want to hold the legs closer to the body or um, cl to close up the uh, um, the whole of the the, pe the the pizza of the turkey, <laughs> uh, you can use a turkey laser. Let me know if I'm wrong. I have not used a turkey laser in real life before. Oh, Bonnie, I, I have my hair in the teensiest of ponytails. <laughs> so that's, that's why it looks, looks like it was cut. It was getting a little long and a little uh, mullety in, in the back. So it's just long enough to put it in the tiniest of ponytails. And, I, and uh, so it makes it kind of look like I got a haircut. Because uh, really, I probably should get all the, the long stuff cut, cut in the back. Um, but you know, we're doing it with the, uh, with the, just a little hair tie instead. All right. Seven, eight, nine. I lost count. So I had to recount. Um, here is the top two from row 10. But yeah, my hair is forever in a ponytail, except for when I cut it super short. I don't know, in my head, I'm growing it out to, to donate again, so I'll have to, like, spend three years of not cutting it again. We'll see. Oh, you made these stilettos uh, at your quilt retreat, Peggy. Oh, that is awesome. I just love it so much. It's just nothing fancy, just that turkey lacer with some beads, and I don't know, it's so special. I, I, I love using it. Actually, I have another one, but I always, I don't know, I like this blue. It's just like having an extra hand, like just that I can hold these two pieces together almost as if they're pinned, but I just gotta use my turkey laser there. You can kind of see I'm scratching my table a little bit because of it, but oh well. All right, uh, okay, so this is the last row. This is row 11 here. The first two in row 11. And this will be our last one before we start over again. Oh my gosh, you made about 50, 50 of the, the uh, turkey laser stilettos. That's awesome, Peggy. Where does one get a turkey laser? Just from the grocery store, I think. I mean, you know, they might be a whole lot easier to find around Thanksgiving here in the US, but you know, it's almost Easter here. People are making, I don't know, fancy, fancy meats, so uh, they might have them now. Yeah, or at a kitchen store, a grocery store or a kitchen store. I'm sure you can find them online too. In theory, they should be like super cheap and you get a bunch of them all at once. So that, that makes them extra awesome. <laughs> but yeah, and then it just has a couple beads on. I'm, what kind of glue? I'm guessing, I didn't make these, but I'm guessing you could just put a little dab of um, like a super glue or a little dab of, um, what's the hot one? The hot glue gun? Or maybe that that super glue, that E3000, is that is that right? E3000? I'm not sure. E6000? I can't, can't think of it, but it's like a jewelry glue. But I think, you know, just a, a super glue uh, or a hot glue gun would probably work fine too. And if you're looking for beads, the one that I really like is this flat one because it kind of acts as a handle. So you can put whatever beads on you want and it'll work just fine. Oh, E6000, that's the name of the glue. Uh, but I do like, I do like this flat one here. It acts as kind of like a little bit of a handle, I feel like. Not necessary, but I like it. You made then, uh, oh, you got it from Amazon and then made them in the Quilt Club. Oh, Bonnie Hunter has instructions on her website. Oh, that's cool. Okay, uh, that is that. I need an ender here, so let's grab one of these. Okay, so this is 
rows uh, 7 through 11, and now I'm not going to cut them. So this is the way the webbing works, is you're not going to cut you're not gonna cut these pieces and you're not gonna press them yet. You're not gonna do anything with them yet except come back to the top. So I'm just opening them here. All right, so this is back to number seven. So I'm just gonna snip off the leader there. Okay, so this is the first two pieces in row seven. What I'm gonna do now is grab the next piece off of my seven pile. All right, so remember the piles that are over to my left. This is the next piece off of there. So we're just gonna sew that one right to this piece. So this is still row seven and I'm just gonna stitch the next segment onto it. Okay. Let's get the leader out here again. Or not the leader, the, uh, my stiletto. And get those ends together. All right, so that was, now we have three on row seven, and now I'm just gonna grab the next one for row eight. And we just keep going down the column, and I'm gonna continue sewing, so now I'm gonna be held by this string, and I'm gonna be held by the next little string here. So that's that's kind of why we're calling it, it a webbing, where we're just being held by all these these little strings. And then eventually we will fold over the rows and then sew the rows together and we'll still just leave those strings. So we don't have to clip those at all. Ooh, that's the pedal all the way down. So that's, that's as fast as this machine gets. That's a high, high pitched hum. Ooh, got away from me there. Usually I don't go so fast because I'm trying to work on my straight lines <laughs> sewing. Uh, I don't always sew the straightest lines. So I'm trying to do a better job at that. Sometimes that means going a bit slower. All right, there we go. Move the little wonder clip out of the way. Then I'm just putting my stiletto there, acting like a pin again. So I'm aiming, you see this triangle formed here from our seam allowance? I'm kind of aiming for this point. Uh, however, I am just kind of sewing the just a quarter inch seam allowance and letting it be what it's gonna be. But if I really want everything to match up, I will make sure this point is matched up with the one on this side. And then I will sew through that, that spot. There we go. Now I'm, I'm kind of right in on there. So hopefully that point should end up being matched up pretty well. Then same thing here, I'm trying to just match up these two rows together. That should hopefully give us a pretty good point, but I'm not worrying too much about it in, in the grand scheme of this quilt. For me, this quilt is gonna be a practice quilt for free motion, free motion quilting once we get that far. And uh, uh, I'm sure I'll make tons of mistakes, like way more visible mistakes than a point not showing here or there, or a point being clipped or not matching perfectly. So I'm not too worried about perfection with this, this guy.
Done is definitely better than perfect in this case. All right, last one. This is row 11. And then we'll start back at the top. So we're just adding on our little columns, basically. Row by row. Or piece by piece, I suppose. It definitely has a little bit better hum to it after after we um, after I brought it in to the sewing machine hospital, which is just our local sewing and vacuum cleaner place. Uh, they've cleaned my machine a bunch of times and fixed it a bunch of times. So I'll keep going. All right, so now we have three pieces on our little webbing. So I'm gonna just come back to the top, row number seven again. And I should probably, I should be labeling these rows, but I'll do that when, when we're done. So clip this off. And uh, next piece. This is the next piece off of my row seven pile. And we'll just keep adding to it. I think we're gonna get pretty far on our piles today. Uh, he did not show me how to replace the belt. They were kind of a little all over the place at the shop today. He had uh, his helper, his employee working on it and he was trying to figure it out and I went and ran a few other errands while I waited. And you know, they didn't have it done quite when they said, and uh, you know, you know how it goes. So I just let them finish and came back. But I did see him open the, uh, like take it apart when I brought it in. So I think I, I'll be able to do it next time. Hopefully there is no next time. Hopefully this belt lasts a really long time. Oh, you got your Grippets, Pam, today. That's awesome from Mass Drop. So, yeah, the I, I heard a few people were getting their, their Grippets. I got mine here. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, they're in, they're in uh, arm's length. So these uh, this is what I'm going to use for when we free motion quilt. They have, like, little rubber bottoms, so I'm going to use this to move my fabric around instead of quilting gloves because I, my fingers are so small and they don't, they don't play nice with gloves, so uh, we're just going to use the grippets instead, and, and I'm thinking they're going to work fabulously. They have these little nubbins on the top, too, to help grip, and you can actually use, you can actually use the arcs and the straight edge for, for, um, different designs too, if you wanna use uh, like the edge, like ruler work, ruler type work. But yeah, so they had a sale over on Mass Drop a couple weeks ago, and I'm glad a few of, our, a few of you were able to snag, snag them. I'm loving mine so far, even though I'm not, you know, a master free motion quilter or anything yet, so maybe, maybe uh, you know, I'll change my mind later, but right now I, I totally love them. I've used them uh, to help with just my straight line. Um, oh, I don't think I pressed this guy open. But with some straight line uh, quilting, and they, they were helpful for sure, moving the fabric. Big bulk of fabric around. So I think uh, I'm thinking I'm going to be pretty happy when we get to the free motion quilting using them. Oh yeah, Amazon spoiled you with fast delivery and the mass drop ironing pad hasn't come in. Yeah, my my um, ironing pad has not come yet either. 
Uh, it's because the way mass drop works. So what mass drop does is if enough, they, they offer up a product and if enough people purchase it, then the price goes down. So like a certain, if a certain number of people purchase, then it unlocks like the next price. And if then another certain amount of people purchase it, then it unlocks like an even lower price. And then they, they don't make, they don't actually order the product until, until the orders are in. So that means like the money has to go through and then they place the order with the distributor and then the distributor has to ship to them and then they have to ship to us. So it's, it's a whole thing. So that's why, that's why it doesn't come um, on time. Uh, I don't think it's really like eBay. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not super familiar with all the eBay stuff. But with eBay, I think, you know, people have a product already. They offer a ton of fountain pens. They do, Bonnie. So what's fun about Mass Drop is that they have all sorts of different categories. And quilting, of all things, is one of them. So is knitting. So they have, like, fun products having to do with that. But then they have, you know, camera gear. You know, so camera stuff is a category. And, and pens like fountain pens, all that, is, like uh, fountain pens is a category, you know, and, um, you know, tech stuff like goofy keyboards or speakers or, you know, hiking, I think, or outdoor stuff. So it's just kind of a bunch of goofy categories and you can pick which ones you want to follow and then you'll be notified of sales in, in that category. And those grippets were on a little while ago. My embroidery kits are on every once in a while. They've been on several times. And I got one of those wool pressing mats as well. And that's that's what I'm waiting on yet. <laughs> the wool pressing mat. Oh, yep, they have fabric. Oh, yeah, they have a whole cooking, cooking section. I think they have a whole uh, beauty section now, too. It's kind of fun. But yeah, they don't actually have any product until it's purchased. So, you know, we're buying stuff that doesn't exist and then then they order it after that. So that's why it's that's why it takes so long. It's not like Amazon where that product exists and just needs to be shipped immediately. But they tell you all that up front and stuff too. So, they tell you when you can expect it. Yeah, so if you're wanting to get something for like a birthday that's around the corner or something, I would, you know, rethink that. But it's fun if you, you know, were thinking about a product and it just, you know, thought it was too expensive and it's a chance to get it a little, a little less expensive. Chance to jump in. Yeah, and it's all time-based, so it's only, the sale is only good for a certain amount of time. Oh, you placed your quilting needles, nice! Oh, you saw a steam iron on the other day? Oh, fun. Yeah, it can get dangerous. Dangerous looking at it too often. You just want to get all the fun stuff. All right, next row, we have two full chevrons here now. All right, uh, first one from row seven, another one from row seven. So it is starting to get bulky. You know, I got a whole pile of stuff here but not as bulky as if I would have just continued off of that segment that I showed you at the beginning here. Then we would have had fabric everywhere and it would have been a big bulky mess. And I want to deal with that as little as I can until we get to like the quilting. Then we'll have a lot of bulk that we're dealing with. All right. Just holding this edge together. Oh my gosh! 
Lucy, you finished your quilt top tonight. Congrats. How exciting is that? Wow. I cannot wait till I till I get that far on this. Yay. So now you just need a back and then you're all ready to quilt. Oh, you have to pin your seams. You wish you could just clip them. I am so in love with these Wonder Clips. These are actually the mini Wonder Clips. They are so strong and it is so much quicker than pinning. And you don't, with pinning, sometimes you nudge the fabric a little bit. The, the, with these, you don't do that. They just clamp down and, and you're done. Charming chevrons, congrats, Lucy. <laughs> It's so exciting to get a top done. Speaking of, I just remembered, I got my, I have the I Love Home Quilt top done, and that's gonna need some quilting at some point here. We'll get to everything. All right, one, two, three, okay, row nine. We'll get a little further on these tonight. I don't think we'll quite finish this segment, but remember, we also have that one extra piece in row 11 that I have to make into a half chevron yet. Because I, I missed one. So it's the last piece in the last row. So we'll have to work on this a little bit more because I got to do that one extra piece. Oh, you're quilting the I Love Home quilt. Oh, awesome. You're like the hoop, but not sure how to quilt around your embroidered houses. Oh, you could try just echoing. Um, echoing is just where you kind of mimic the shape of the house over and over again. That'd be kind of cute. That's kind of what I'm thinking of doing for mine. But I don't want to think too much on it yet because it's going to be so much further down the road before I can actually work on it. This feels weird for some reason. Oh, well, I think we're good. All right. Snip or clip, I suppose. Oh, you love it so much. That's awesome, Gretchen. Yeah, it was a fun project. All right, last one of this row. Oh, you really like the embroidery in it. Yeah, I, I um, that was fun to do a quilt with embroidery. Blair Stocker with Wisecrafts Quilts did a wool applique project. Oh, you you did that too. Oh, that's awesome, Lucy. Yeah, I, I saw that that project with all the florals. Oh, good. I'm glad you I'm glad you worked on on that. I thought that was super pretty. Yeah, if you guys don't follow Blair from Wisecraft Quilts, you should. She's she's awesome. We've done one of her projects here. We did the uh, that English paper piecing project. And I turned mine into that pillow. So much fun. All right, next row. I just like flipping these open as I, as I go. All right, grabbing from the top again. Let's see, one, two, three, four. So there's only four more in each 
including this. So there's only uh, four, like one, and then the three more for the the row. And then we're done with getting all these rows together. But remember, I still have to do that, make that last half chevron in row 11. So we won't get quite done. That means I'm going to have to get the ironing board out and the iron and everything tomorrow so we can do that one last little piece <laughs> that I forgot. I was hoping I'd have my wool wool pressing pad by then, but I kind of don't think that'll happen unless it magically comes in the mail tomorrow. That'd be cool. I'm just expecting that to be a, a nice surprise when it comes. All right, that was row, the first row. Okay, second row. Love all these colors together with this red. A bright, saturated, juicy quilt. All right, clip. All right, I just kind of stop in the middle because then I know I've um, sewn through the area that I have clipped and then I just readjust the rest of it and make sure the needle's down so things don't move on me. Oh, can I hardly wait for vegetable gardens? Yes, it is so sad. The garden is still covered with two feet of snow and oh my gosh, all I want to do is have pretty flowers and food growing in there again. I feels like an extended winter, winter this year round. Ooh, get in there. You know, the other goofy thing, like it's feeling a little goofy today, um, and it's just because I haven't sewn in a while, I think, but also I am sewing with my tennis shoes on, and I don't usually do that. It, it feels so weird, um, but that's the way it is tonight, and they're, they're on too tight for me to just flip them off, but um, socks would be nicer. I usually like doing socks. Ooh, you got fun mail today. Oh, cute stamps you ordered. Nice. Oh, but you can't get to them because of the snow. Ugh, 18 inches. Yeah, that's too much, Christine. Too, too much. Yeah, it's kind of the kind of the time of year for some weird weather. I would think this would be the worst time to try and figure out a wedding just like or like an outdoor wedding like how do you know if it's gonna be like that perfect spring day or uh, just horribly cold I suppose maybe it's a little early for an outdoor wedding but around here but that'd be so str stressful wondering what weather is gonna be like oh you can't even imagine 18 inches yeah we got that in our garden right now All right, we're on the last row again, so we can scooch up to the top. So this is this is just going quick, I feel like, tonight. We're almost going to get this whole quadrant done. And I mean, we still have to sew the rows together, but this is a real good start. So we'll sew the rows of this quadrant together, then the other quadrant, and then we'll sew those two together. I don't think that's what we did last time. Last time we uh, left the rows like this and we sewed both 
um, the two rows together before we did the rows, uh, both the quadrants together before the rows. And I think uh, this time we're going to finish up each of these. Uh, I think it'll go faster and just because we don't have as much bulk around, I think it'll be good. Oh, your daughter's getting married on April 7th! Yay, Connie, that's exciting. Ooh, in NYC. That sounds amazing. How fun. That's where the hubs and I were living, uh, but then we flew, flew back to Wisconsin for our wedding. All right, we're back to row, row seven again. Oh my gosh, your son's getting married in Minneapolis next February. Ah, oh, that's exciting. So cool, Bonnie. That, I'm assuming, is an indoor wedding. Because <laughs> that would be pretty cold unless you're doing some sort of like ice house wedding. Or, a, you know, like a, a fishing wedding or something. Ice fishing. All right, so now we're starting to get bulky. This is all dangling by my side here. It's another reminder that I think when we start quilting, I'm going to put a, a TV tray next to me on my left. So I kind of make an L table, basically. Because then I can have that supporting supporting the bulk of my fabric. Because it just wants to, you can see, gravity just keeps wanting to pull it down. And that's not fun. It's getting hard to maneuver. But I think there's only two, two rows after this one. Ooh, a s'mores bar. That sounds fun. <laughs> That's a really cute idea. My brother and his wife had um, caramel apples at, at their wedding from this place that we all went to when we grew up that has the best caramel apples. But it was super cute. I love little fun things like that. S'mores bar sounds amazing. Alright, where did I leave off? Nine. A few purples together in a row here. I think that'll be cute. All right, two more, then we're done. All right, row 10. Oh, some of the, the brides are, uh, bridesmaids are having different, different popcorn at the reception. Cute. Can't go wrong with s'mores and popcorn, I'm thinking. Supersonic speed. All right. Um, one more. I 
I think before we do the last column, I have two, two columns to do yet, but before we do the last one, I think I'd like to do that row 11, that, that one half chevron that I don't have made yet. So I think tonight we will sew one more column on. That'll be our last column before I have to do that, that one last half chevron piece. So then tomorrow we will start out by making that piece and get that all done in the last row column uh, sewn on. And then we will start sewing these rows together. You know, where they're all just hanging from the little chain piece right now, we will sew that together. But here, if you want to know what I'm talking about, here's the here's the last piece in um, row 11 that I don't have done yet. I, I have to cut that apart, and then we'll get our two half chevrons. So there will be one and one on the other side. And then we sew the two of those together, and it makes a half chevron, kind of like we'll make one like this. And uh, didn't do that one yet. I think it fell on the floor, so we'll have to do that tomorrow. But this is it for this row. We got one more column to do tonight. And man, we made a whole pile of progress. Like, I feel like I made a whole quilt here, really. I mean, really, if I sew this together, these rows together, then we have ourselves like a baby quilt for sure. So that's just in an evening. I mean, you know, I did have all these half chevrons made already, but still not too shabby for putting, putting a top together. All right, so here is uh, the start of the last column we'll do tonight. And thanks for hanging out with me again tonight, guys. Uh, we're, we're picking up the Charming Chevrons quilt again. And I think we'll, we'll fit in a few other little fun projects, kind of like how we did the punch needle uh, last week. We'll, we'll do a few more little fun things like that, too, while we work on this bigger project. Oh, you have two extra chevrons left left over. So I would have had one more half chevron left over if I wouldn't have accidentally sewn all those pieces together. Remember I, I had the mistake where I sewed two red pieces to one of the pattern pieces. So I, you know, I'll have to seam rip that out. But I thought I had enough besides that. And I did, but one fell on the floor or something, so I, I missed making it. All right, next up. Oh, you counted, and, and <laughs> you still had two extra. Oh, bummer. Throw them on the back of the quilt. That's, that's what I'm going to do with all my scraps, I think. I'm going to get them all on the back. And actually, that's a project that we could do coming up here because we're going to be finishing this top pretty quickly, I think. And uh, I wanted to use up every single scrap. So we will do a session where we make fabric from all of the tiniest of tiny scraps. And, and that'll be kind of fun. We'll spend a couple days doing that. And... Then we'll sew that together with a bunch of this red that we'll use for the back of the quilt. And then once we have a back done, then we can sandwich this thing together and start free motion quilting, which was the whole point of this to begin with, right? For me it was. This is my, my learning quilt to free motion, free motion quilting. So yeah, so we will be working on this for a for like a while yet because I'm going to quilt this whole thing. We got to make a whole back for it yet. So if you wanted to work on this quilt with me in the evenings here, there's still tons of time to catch up for sure. And if you want to do that, the pattern along with um, well, the pattern is in the my Facebook post or if you're watching on YouTube, it's in the YouTube post. And if you click on the link and go to the pattern, it will show 
what you need for for fabric, like what quantity of fabric you need for all different sizes. I'm making a twin size quilt here, but there's a crib size, a lap size, a twin size, and a queen size variations on this. And it's a great way to use up a bunch of scraps as well. So I encourage you to join along yet if you're liking just these little chevrons. Ooh, you want to make a bread basket, but not sure how to do it. Oh, needs to make a, a homemade loaf. Ooh, that sounds like a fun project. That sounds like a getting the measuring tape out and, and uh, thinking through some of the measurements. Like if you have a, a homemade um, a loaf pan already, you could use, start using that for measurements. Oh, you're making a lap one? Oh, you're going to make a lap one, Gretchen. Awesome. Yeah, that one would be a lot quicker than this twin twin one, I think. But I wanted to, I wanted to do one that was big enough that I could uh, lay completely under without my legs hanging out and, and that my husband could without his legs hanging out uh, on the couch. So this is going to be the couch the couch napping blanket when I'm when I'm done with it here. We have like 80 of those already, but we don't have one big enough that you can just lay underneath one. So, hence the twin size, and I get to use up a bunch of my, some of my favorite fabrics. So I'm, I'm stoked to be doing uh, this twin size one. All right, this is going to be our last piece tonight, and then... Uh, then we'll do the last column. We actually have, you know, one more column of these to do. But um, we'll do that tomorrow because, remember, I have to finish that half chevron first. So we will pick up starting tomorrow with that unmade half chevron. Or it started. But I gotta sew that together and that requires pressing and trimming and that whole thing again. So it'll be a great review. So if you haven't done the parts where you're making these little half chevrons with the two of the fabrics of the same color, if you haven't done that process yet, uh, tomorrow would be a good time to peek in because we will be doing that process with um, one, one half chevron because <laughs> we are one short. Otherwise, you can check out some of the replay videos on, on YouTube. On YouTube, uh, this is all on, uh, the replays are all on uh, YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. And uh, there I have every project grouped, and they're in order from most recent to the oldest. So uh, you can go check out uh, some of the older ones. Or if you're just getting going and want want to sew with me but you know if we're a little further ahead that would be a great way to do it oh hello Leah good morning to you it's like super early for you isn't it okay so that is it I'm gonna clip this off and one last thing I'm gonna do before I set this down is I'm going to put a number my number seven clip on here so this is, the, this is the number seven that was holding my bundle of row seven pieces together. I'm going to just snag it from there. I'm going to steal it from there. And remember, this is, our, this is our B quadrant. We finished the A quadrant, so I'm just putting a B there for a reminder. So I don't need any of the other numbers on here now, as long as I know that this top row is row seven. Then if I flip rotate this all around, then I'll still be still be good to go. Uh, so, all right, I'm gonna flip you guys around and uh, I'll show you what we got going on here. We, like I said, we have every uh, piece sewn together except for our last row of these. And again, that's because I forgot to do one. <laughs> so we got, we have it sewn uh, together, the, the first part of it sewn together, but now we need to finish it up so it ends up looking like one of these these pieces here with the two two half square triangles making one of these half chevrons. So we'll do that first tomorrow and then we'll sew the last column on and then we will start sewing the rows together because right now the rows are just all dangling from 
um, the web style of sewing this together. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you guys around and we'll take a look at this. I think this is a ton of progress for tonight. All right, hello again. Let me get you situated here. Okay, there we go. So here is what we did tonight. We did all of this tonight, which is crazy. So here is, here's the top, row seven. There's the first row and all of the rows underneath. It's looking so pretty. So all we have to do next is uh, we'll put these rows together and uh, this quadrant will be done. And then we still have to sew the, the long rows together for the other quadrant. My little mass of stuff up here. Then we'll sew those two together. The, the two rows seven through 11 quadrants. And then we sew the top to the bottom and the top is done at that point. So we might get real close to finishing. Uh, well, it's already Wednesday, isn't it? So we'll finish it next week for sure, the top of this quilt. And maybe we'll even start playing around with the back. So I wanna take all of my scraps. Here is my, my thing of scraps here. I wanna make new fabric out of all of these little shimmy sham scraps there. So that will, uh, we'll, we'll try and schedule that for next week when we get done with, with this. Oh, you're right. We're gonna, we have to iron this too yet, Carla. <laughs> That's one of the things I always forget. Um, I don't think I'm gonna iron by quadrant. I think it would make it a little bit easier to press each section uh, by itself, but I kind of want to do all my pressing at once because I kind of have to rearrange my whole area here. I will get my my antique, uh, my Amish ironing board out here and we can take a look at that and I'll put a towel on there and then we'll spend an evening just pressing the heck out of the back of our quilt because we have not pressed any of these rows, any of these together or open or anything yet. So we'll we'll have a whole evening of pressing. Uh, but yeah, we'll get the whole thing sewn together though first. I think that's just gonna be a little bit easier for me. Uh, just cause of space, I'm in, in this small space here. But thanks for the reminder, <laughs> reminder Carla. Um, all right, guys, uh, this will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. Again, you can watch all my projects there from beginning to end. Um, you know, we, we're here an hour every evening just whittling away at our projects. Some of them are really big projects. Some are smaller. Uh, like this one, we finished up, finished up our make it 80% good punch needle last night. We made the cute little back for it. Uh, so that project is all up on there now. And I'll be here again tomorrow. So thanks again for joining me. If you were new tonight, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, and I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Have a great evening. Good night.